A few months ago, I uploaded a video on the dark side of Craigslist in which I covered a number of terrifying posts from the site. I got a few comments asking for another episode, so here it is. Let's investigate. If you enjoy internet mysteries and generally disturbing content, feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications for more content like this. If you're interested in supporting the channel, you can become a Ko-fi member or a channel member to gain access to uncut videos and other perks, or you can leave me a tip by clicking the thanks under this video. Thanks to anyone who considers this. This video will centre around topics that some might find triggering, view discretion is advised. You can become a Ko-fi member or a channel member to watch an uncut version of this video which features extra details that were unsuitable for this cut. This video is sponsored by Beam. Anyone who knows me knows that my sleep schedule is atrocious. I usually don't get to sleep until around 4 or 5 in the morning, which is usually not a problem, until I actually have a reason to wake up early and end up having to survive the day on 3 hours sleep. I recently started using Beam's Dream Powder, which you can add to hot water or milk to make a hot cocoa drink containing ingredients such as nanohemp, melatonin, and L-theanine that all work together to improve the quality of sleep. They also have a non-CBD version if you prefer that. I was really surprised by how well it worked. I started to feel tired around 40 minutes after drinking it, at midnight, not 5am, and somehow managed to get up as soon as my alarm went off the next morning, which is shocking as I normally hit snooze for at least an hour before I finally get out of bed. Since using Dream, I've felt more energised throughout the day and haven't needed to take a nap in the evening, so I've noticed a massive difference. It tastes really nice too. My favourite flavour is cinnamon cocoa, but they have various others to choose from, including sea salt caramel, chocolate raspberry and mint chip. If you're looking for a product that is clinically shown to help you fall asleep and stay asleep, tastes great and is vegan and gluten free, I'd highly recommend Dream. You can subscribe and save 20%, plus get an additional 15% off on top of that and a free frother with my code INVESTIGATOR when you click my link or scan the QR code on the screen. That's up to 35% off the original price. You can pause, skip or cancel anytime so there's no risk. The first post we'll take a look at is from August 2013 and was titled Keeping the Peace. The post contained a photo of a seemingly dead dog lying on a blood-stained sheet with its eyes closed, mouth slightly open and blood coming out of its mouth. It was captioned, 5.30 in the morning is not the time to hear your dog barking. A good dog is a quiet dog. So it seems that OP got sick of their dog barking and decided to kill it, then post about it on Craigslist for some unknown reason. There was an article on the Riverfront Times about this post. They seemed to think it was someone else's dog that the OP had found or stolen. The wording of the post seems to imply that it was their own dog, but without more information, it's impossible to know. The article states that this was posted in the St. Louis Rants and Rave section. Here are a few excerpts. Now, animal rights advocates are trying to track down who might have posted this and whose missing pet may have been murdered. The post, which first made the rounds on the Facebook page of Hope Animal Rescues, a Metro East group, was flagged and removed yesterday. I have to go on the assumption that this is a real photo and this is somebody's dog. Jackie Spiker, co-founder of Hope Rescues, tells Daily RFT. She says that multiple people have now filed complaints with the Belleville Police Department in hopes that officers may be able to track the IP address of the poster. Other volunteers are searching recent missing dog ads to see if they can find a match. Based on her extensive experience with animal cruelty cases, Spiker says the photo looks legitimate and not photoshopped. I have to do my due diligence, she says. 
Spiker spent some time searching to see if this was just a horrible stock image online of a murdered dog, but couldn't find anything. Riverfront Times later updated the article, stating that they did a reverse image search and found an NT News article from 2011 which featured the photo of the dog, so thankfully it was a hoax, but the photo appeared to have been very real and I have no idea what happened to this poor dog in the first place. The link to this article no longer works and I couldn't find an archive of it. Reverse image searches turned up nothing else either. Although this post was fake, there are countless documented cases of animal abuse related to Craigslist ads, many of which occur after an abuser has obtained a pet by responding to an ad. Craigslist does not allow users to sell pets on their site, but you can rehome an animal by giving it away for free or only charging a small rehoming fee. While the prevention of the sale of animals does reduce some potential risks, an abuser might be more inclined to reply to ads where they can get pets for free. Most pet owners who find themselves in an unexpected and often devastating situation that means that they can no longer look after their animals would do their due diligence and not just hand their pet over to the first random stranger who responds, without doing anything they could to ensure the pet will be safe and happy living with them. But there is only so much you can do, even if you meet the person, visit the house and do a background check, there's no way you could know for sure what that person's intentions are. They aren't going to leave any obvious signs in their home and just because they don't have a criminal record related to such crimes doesn't mean they never committed them. There are various examples of animal abuse related to Craigslist on the PETA website. Not the best source, I know, but the article does a good job of compiling relevant cases. Here are a few excerpts. July 2023, Chicago, Illinois. TheMessenger.com reported that authorities had arrested a man on four counts of animal torture and two counts of aggravated cruelty to animals for allegedly killing at least six kittens in the past three months and buying lookalikes on Craigslist so his mother wouldn't become suspicious. According to the report, the suspect's girlfriend found videos and images on his phone of kittens being violently killed. In a bail hearing, prosecutors reportedly alleged that the suspect had drowned and microwaved the kittens. His girlfriend also told authorities that the suspect admitted to killing three cats in the microwave, which led them to discover a black, foul-smelling bag in the pantry with parts of multiple kittens. The suspect was reportedly undergoing a week-long mental health evaluation. No additional information was available. October 2021, Johnson City, Tennessee. JohnsonCityPress.com reported that a cat who had been given away through a Craigslist ad had been found dead in a parking lot. The animal's back legs had been bound and a screwdriver with what officers said appeared to be blood was lying beside the cat. A suspect was arrested and charged with aggravated cruelty to animals. A spokesperson for the public animal shelter reportedly said, This is a prime example of why we tell people not to give away animals on Craigslist. Unfortunately, there are people who want to harm animals and this is an easy way for them to get them. July 2021 at Wolfborough, New Hampshire LassoniaDailySun.com reported that authorities had arrested Brendan Elwell on cruelty to animals charges for allegedly killing four kittens and leaving their remains near a walking path. According to the report, Elwell allegedly admitted to authorities that he had been killing cats. He confirmed he got them through Craigslist and he started caring for them, but then after drinking some alcohol, he decided to kill them. During an interview with a police staff sergeant, Elwell reportedly stated there were a lot of videos and pictures on his phone detailing what he did to the cats. He said the contents on his phone would give the staff sergeant nightmares. The news report stated that Elwell said he had been killing a cat per month for about a year. A criminal complaint reportedly stated, the defendant, Brandon Elwell, used a knife to cut up and dismember a small kitten, then transported some of the remains to the public Bridge Falls path and intentionally placed the remaining parts of the dead kitten near the path. Elwell reportedly told someone that he was the person who placed them in the park and that he has thrown them at cars while he has driven down the road. Additionally, Mr. Elwell stated that he had thrown parts of the cats into the previous owner's yards. 
According to the report, during a search of Elwell's bedroom, police found guns, airsoft guns, knives, swords, hatchets, and a hammer. The police staff sergeant reportedly stated in an affidavit, Many of the cutting weapons and the hammer had what appeared to be animal hair on them as well as blood. Authorities also found two live young kittens in a plastic container which they brought to a humane society. Police also found an adult cat, and the police staff sergeant told Elwell's grandmother, with whom he apparently lived, that the police would make arrangements for the animal, as it is likely he may not be able to have access to the cats while he is out on bail. The criminal case against Elwell was pending. April 2018, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania WPXI.com reported that authorities had charged a man with more than 100 counts of felony cruelty to animals after finding more than 50 dead animals at his home. The animals included 33 chickens, 18 ducks, and 5 rabbits found dead on a porch and in garbage bags in the yard. Many of them had apparently starved to death. According to the news report, the suspect told authorities that he acquired them from people giving them away for free on Craigslist. It honestly makes me sick knowing that there are people out there who take pleasure in abusing and killing animals, and it's really disheartening that the punishment they face, if they're even caught, is often relatively minor. In the UK, as of June 2021, the maximum prison sentence for animal cruelty is just five years, and prior to that it was only six months, which really isn't much of a deterrent. It isn't always the people responding to ads who have the nefarious intentions. It's not unheard of for users to knowingly sell ill pets online, claiming they're perfectly healthy and up-to-date on all their vaccines. As I said, Craigslist doesn't allow pets to be sold per se, but they can be given away with a rehoming fee, which is how they get around it. Here are a couple of examples. November 2020, San Fernando Valley, California. KTLA.com reported that a puppy had died just days after he was purchased through an ad on Craigslist. According to the report, a family saw an ad for a healthy white Maltese Yorkie mix who had all his shots and so they bought the pup for around $600. But after taking him to the vet and paying a $1,200 bill, the family learned Scotty was ill and tested positive for parvo. Just five days after arriving at their San Fernando Valley home, Scott passed away, the family says. Although it's against the website's policy to sell pets on the site, people are allowed to post pets up for adoption and some backyard breeders are placing ads charging a rehoming fee. A spokesperson for the family said, To anybody, just don't buy a dog from Craigslist. We heard about scammers but never really thought it would happen to us. The family was reportedly suing the seller who denied the transaction ever took place. October 2020, Raleigh, North Carolina. ABC11.com reported that a puppy had to be euthanized just hours after he was purchased through an ad on Craigslist. The buyers were reportedly told by the seller that he or she had two eight-week-old puppies left and they were $300 each. In text messages, the seller said the pups had their first shots and were dewormed. No records were provided, and the buyers apparently met the seller at a neutral location. According to the report, after returning home, the buyers noted that the animal was unwell. She was taken to a veterinary hospital, where it was determined that she was infested with multiple internal parasites and severely anemic. Her condition was so serious that euthanasia was determined to be the most humane course of action. The news reporter tried calling the seller, and the two different numbers the buyers had for the seller were already disconnected. The outlet reported that it hears from viewers monthly who have been scammed when trying to welcome a new animal companion into their home. The moral of these awful stories is to be extremely careful when using Craigslist and other sites to get or give away pets. Of course life can be unpredictable and there's sometimes no way of knowing how your circumstances will change in the future, but you should always be in a stable situation when you get a pet in the first place. 
Rehoming animals is stressful for them at best. At worst, they could end up meeting the same fate as those mentioned in this entry. As for adopting animals, the kindest thing to do is go to a shelter. You'll be giving an animal a second chance at life, and you won't be misled or lied to regarding the health of the animal. Compared to the topic of the last entry, this one is extremely minor, but still a pretty big red flag. It read, Are you a foodie who likes to cruise the Chicago restaurant scene? I'm usually in a relationship with a classy, attractive woman, but I'm between girlfriends these days, so I don't have anyone to check out new restaurants with on weekends. If you have the same qualities I do, in shape, intelligent, well-educated, and an adventurous palate, let's talk. I'm in shape, intelligent, college educated with an MBA, personable, single white professional. I'm easy to talk with, nice sense of humour, fun to be with. And best of all, I won't hassle you for s just because I picked up the checks. And after dinner, I make a great wingman to cruise high-end Gold Coast bars with. Just point out a cute guy you'd like to meet, and I'll manoeuvre you into flirty, get acquainted, chat with him. The only condition is that you have to invite me to the wedding. And of course I won't complain if you want to reciprocate my efforts on your behalf with an introduction or two to an attractive woman. Give me your basic stats, age, height, weight, or at least dress size, hair colour, eye colour, etc. Let me treat us to after work drinks this week so we can check out each other's potential for partners in crime. Put sounds great on the subject line so I don't delete your message as spam. In some fantasy world where predators didn't exist, this could be seen as quite a sweet ad. An honest man just looking for a platonic friendship with a woman who he can go out for meals with and maybe they help each other find a partner. In the real world, however, that's likely not what this is. Even if the OP doesn't have a specific nefarious intention, like luring a woman who responds to the ad back to his place to murder her, I'd be surprised if he didn't try it on with her if she happened to be his type. Which wouldn't exactly be a huge coincidence, considering he's asking for their age, height, weight, etc. before they meet. I really hope no one took a chance on this guy, he really doesn't sound worth the risk of becoming a statistic. In August 2011, an ad was posted on Craigslist that read, Caretaker position for farm, Southern Ohio. Simply watch over a 688 acre patch of hilly farmland and feed a few cows. You get 300 a week and a nice two-bedroom trailer. Someone older and single preferred, but will consider all. Relocation a must. You must have a clean record and be trustworthy. This is a permanent position. The farm is used mainly as a hunting preserve, is overrun with game, has a stocked three-acre pond, but some beef cattle will be kept. Nearest neighbour is a mile away. The place is secluded and beautiful. It will be a real getaway for the right person job of a lifetime. If you are ready to relocate, please contact ASAP. Position will not stay open, including name, age, phone number, and email, please. Seems like a pretty normal job ad, right? Not bad pay for what sounds like relatively easy work. It sounds like a decent opportunity for someone who keeps themselves to themselves and would prefer to live in a rural area. 51-year-old David Pauly had been out of work for months and living on his brother's sofa when he came across the ad. He was divorced, didn't really have any commitments, so the job seemed perfect for him. He applied, as did more than 100 others, and was thrilled to be offered an interview, telling his sister that this opportunity was divine intervention and that his prayers had finally been answered. David met Richard Beasley, who had posted the ad, and 16-year-old Brogan Rafferty, a family friend of Richard's, at a restaurant before driving with them to the remote area where Richard claimed he owned land. Brogan claims he went to the toilet, and when he came back, Richard had shot David, whose lifeless body was now lying on the ground. Richard told Brogan to bury the body in a shallow grave nearby. This wasn't Richard's first murder, though. 
David would be buried next to 56-year-old Ralph Geiger, who Richard had picked up on the street sometime prior, with the promise of the exciting job opportunity. After Richard killed him, he took Ralph's social security card and driver's license and impersonated him to claim his benefits, even renting out a property in his name. Richard's third target was 49-year-old Scott Davis, who, like David, responded to the Craigslist ad, then met Richard and Brogan in a public place, before he was lured back to the area where the other victims were buried. Thankfully, Scott managed to escape and hid in some bushes for seven hours before finding a house nearby where he called the police, who initially didn't believe him, assuming it was a drug deal gone wrong, until he showed them the ad on Craigslist. They began investigating, but weren't able to catch Richard before he murdered another man. 47-year-old Tim Kern was a street cleaner before he became unemployed and responded to the ad, hoping it would give him the opportunity to provide for his two sons. By the time he realised there was no job and the ad was a front, it was too late, and he was murdered by Richard, this time behind an abandoned shopping centre. During their investigation, police traced the Craigslist ad to the property that Richard had rented out under Ralph Geiger's name and spoke to the landlord. Sometime later, Richard contacted his landlord, resulting in police locating him and arresting him on the 16th of November 2011. In 2013, Richard was sentenced to death after being convicted of aggravated murder, attempted murder, aggravated robbery and kidnapping. He is currently imprisoned at a correctional institution in Ohio and has always claimed he is innocent. Brogan turned down a deal to get parole when he was middle-aged in exchange for information on Richard and was eventually found guilty on three counts of aggravated murder and sentenced to life in prison. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts and theories in the comments, plus any suggestions you might have for any future videos. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. Huge thank you to my Kofi members and channel members whose names are on screen now. I really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week in a new video.